My life has been a bit strange. I was planning to go to Italy to continue my career as an opera singer, but India kind of happened by accident and it's been my home for the past four years and it's been probably the best years of my life. What basically happened is I had uploaded a video on YouTube singing a Hindi song several years ago uh, when I was going through a bit of a heartbreak. <laughs> And at that time, the video went viral and something I, I really never expected or imagined. <laughs> Music has this amazing ability to connect people. And for me, this show, the opportunity that I'm going to have to collaborate with different artists is really exciting for me. Being a mentor for me is quite a big space to fill. I think more than anything, just exploring the journey along the way and maybe seeing the way that I work with different musicians will inspire to go and explore and find her voice. Nexa Journeys is going to be about exploring experiences. And for me, I'm a firm believer in getting out of your comfort zone and I truly believe that that is when magic happens. So for me, this trip is just about getting out of my comfort zone and kind of jumping into any new experiences and situations. And I'm so excited for that. I always notice that when I do my shows, usually I'll start with something English or Italian or, or something operatic. Then on the second song, I'll usually throw in a Hindi song. And then suddenly everyone stops. And, and it's, it's a common reaction that they're all looking around. They're very confused because with Western classical music, a lot of the times you're singing in French, German, Italian, Latin. So for me, I've actually rarely sung in English. It's my entire life, I've basically been singing in other languages. And I definitely get kicks that are just kind of, you know, weaving in those little words and, and kind of surprising people. It's kind of a way to show that music can be universal and language is, you know, not a barrier for that. Matthew Della Pola is a celebrated music producer who's been working with most of the legends for the last 20 years, most of my idols that I've looked up to growing up, from Celine Dion to Andrea Bocelli to Barbra Streisand. Now we are working together, working on my first album. Matthew has taught me a lot, a lot about what it means to really be an artist and also the disciplines of being an artist. And I've been very lucky and fortunate to kind of have him as a mentor. You know, that's the beauty of music. The words are almost secondary to the, the musical and, and feeling you get inside your body created by the music itself. The words are almost a luxury. If the music's done right, then all the emotion will be conveyed to that and the words are just a bonus. And like you said, so many people don't know what people are singing, yeah. you know, and uh, it still comes off great. But that's part of the magic of it. Yeah. You know? Experiences help with bringing out different parts of your soul. 
And when you put that into music, the music become relevant and relate to more people. I think that's what experience really does. It helps connect more people through your art and through music. Love, what kind of artist do you want to be? Man, that's a tough one. I wish I knew, I mean, I... But I think I like all artists. I sing all their songs and all of that, but uh, I think I secretly want to playback sing. Playback? Yeah. Oh. What I really loved about Magurima is her kind of zest for life and her hunger to learn, to learn more about different cultures and music. Playback singing is really fun. But one of the things you have to remember is that playback singing, you are acting. You have to think of that character. Right? Remember the time in Varanasi when I sang? I was so nervous. You know, I, I know it didn't show on my face, but, but you know, deep inside I was just trembling. But, but I couldn't thank you enough. <laughs> chance that Madhurima and I had to record a section of the Ram Leela and actually have that play during the Ram Leela performance in the evening was pretty insane and unique and there's a bit of a pressure because you can't mess that up. It's, it's something that everybody knows so if they even hear something a little bit different, a little bit off, it's going to be an issue. Hey, how's the rehearsal going? Um, it's not going well. I, I don't think I can do this. Why? What happened? What happened? I just... I can understand why Madurima was nervous. It was her first performance, her first recording. But that, that's the first step. You have to overcome all of that. You have to learn, you have to mess up in order to get past all of that and, and improve and get better and learn. Listen, what are you worried about? You know, the fact that my, my voice is for, uh, for an actor. I don't even know the actor. He doesn't know me. I don't know how it's going to come out. So. I don't know how all of this is going to turn out because okay. I'm just nervous. I'm, I'll screw up the play, you know? I, it'll just screw up the entire mood of the play. People will not know what <laughs> okay, I'm talking okay, about. I'm just okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, okay, it's a challenge. That's, that's definitely a challenge for any artist. So it was, it was maybe a, a much more extreme example, but an, an example nevertheless of how an artist needs to kind of get in the skin of a character and think of how they would be, you know, expressing themselves. Can I try singing it for yeah. you once? One good thing that happened um, about Madurima being really nervous is it kind of helped me take a back seat and it helped me not think about my own nerves and pressure to kind of, you know, sing the Ram Leela correctly and, and well. specifically seeing Pallavi's reaction and she was just like really ecstatic and excited and happy for us. Madurima and I looked at each other and kind of gave each other a nod and said, okay, this has actually come out pretty well. I think we both felt pretty great because under the circumstances and the pressure and the challenges, I think we kind of came out with something that we were both pretty proud of. heard from Nexa Journeys and heard that we were going to be going from Delhi all the way to Bangkok, it was basically a no-brainer for me um, to say yes because it was one of my burning passions to explore Northeast India especially. It's just so unique in its culture and so undiscovered still, which for me I found really exciting because there's just still so much to see and explore and the people are so kind and they're also very excited to show you. So one of the great experiences on the AH1, courtesy Giddish, was being invited to a wedding in Kohima, Nagaland. It's really nice of them to invite us to this wedding, but I'm feeling kind of embarrassed that we're also underdressed. Well, that's true. But uh, they think uh, that I'm damn stylish, man. They just saw me get up from the S-cross. Guys, where's Natalie, huh? Um, she's practicing. What do you mean, she's practicing? Who are you, Ki? Our band hasn't shown up. A band? I don't know where to arrange a band from. 
Uh, but I think I can help you. Listen, I'd really love to help you, but it's just really short notice and I don't know the language and honestly, I really just don't want to ruin your big day. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. sorry. Courtesy Giddish, I was put on the spot to sing at a wedding in a language I don't know, a culture I don't know, and then I find out that the man I'm singing with is a superstar of the Northeast. Ruben is this very kind of quirky, very unique, true sense of an artist. Guru Ruben Mashangva is a true legend of the Northeast. He's a traveling musician who has won multiple awards and performed across the country. So Ruben was also a guest at the wedding, so he came down from Manipur. Collect the Pilava. Are you talking about a woman? One vine you'll see. No way. No one you'll meet. So I think right here, yeah. there's a really famous uh, Latin piece that's sung yeah. a lot of times in churches and in weddings. Yeah. It's called Ave Maria. Oh, uh, Maria. So actually, hearing this, I actually think we can fit it in. I think it could, yeah. Can, yeah, we, yeah. Can, we, can we try? Yeah. Who Ave Maria. How was that? Wow, man. Yeah? Why? Okay. Why are you worried about <laughs> Good, so so good. Who would have ever thought that a Latin piece called Ave Maria, which I sang growing up in Canada, would be sung in Nagaland, Kohima, at a wedding? I mean, I would have never imagined this in a million years, but that is the incredible thing about this entire road trip. There's a certain feeling that I get in my in my soul and in my heart. For me, that's something that I always thrive on. I think it all stems down from singing in church growing up. There was a special divine connection that would happen when I sing in church, and it's probably the only place till date that I really feel that so strongly. We definitely come from different musical backgrounds, but there's still this kind of essence that when musicians meet, there's a special kind of energy that happens because somewhere there's, there's something that we both really relate on. And I thought that was really special that in these short notice instances that we were able to kind of pull something off and collaborate in a way that I never really would have ever imagined. When a lot of people look at me, many times there's different reactions. There's a bit of awe, there's a bit of confusion, there's a bit of curiosity. I'm what many people would probably call a cross-cultural collaborator. And sometimes these collaborations are what really change a nation and change the people and the land. And one of those things that I realized on the AH1 was tea. If you go around the world and you ask people one thing about India, many people will say chai. Everyone in India, if you ask them, chai kidra se hai, they're all gonna say it's it's from India, myself included. I assume that. And after sitting with Mr. Sarma, it was really fascinating to see the success of this collaboration. Ranjit Sarma is this really, really, really sweet man that I had the opportunity of meeting while we were in Assam. Mr. Sarma has been a tea planter for over 40 years. He's very passionate about his own history and stories and tea leaves and the history of tea in India. This, like is, this is actually incredible. Yes. Oh my gosh. Sai P. 
This is real Assam tea, right? Assam tea. But I heard that tea really only started once the British came. Oh, yes. This community in Apara Samsimpo, they found these tea plants have been growing in the wild in abundance. Right. Then an ex-army personnel called Robert Bruce. This gentleman appeared in the scene 1823 and he could make out that this is tea. And it was taken so well in London that Assam tea found to be having much more character than the China teas. Wow. There's just so much that has happened while they were here from tea and just from, I think, architecture and music as well. I believe you are a good singer. I sing, yes. You are? <laughs> and I love singing and learning about different languages and cultures. It appears that you are also becoming like tea to represent a cross-cultural <laughs> situation. That would be really wonderful. In tea plantation, this walking community, they have some fabulous native songs oh. and tunes. Maybe I'll be able to uh, play a number for you. You for... have here? Yes, yes. I would I really have. love to hear it. Mr. Sarma played me a song on the gramophone and it's a song that the tea leaf pluckers sing to um, in order to kind of be more efficient when they're plucking and keep the rhythm going. So this is kind of like an old school way of an assembly line, but with music. So I found that really cool and I was kind of very insistent that I wanted to go in the tea leaf gardens with these ladies and sing it and see how that works. I firmly believe that language has never been a barrier with music and I think any artist can go anywhere in the world and as long as you can hum a note or play a tune, you're going to connect with people regardless. Um, music has its own way of making people feel. Even if they're not necessarily understanding the language, they can feel something. There's an energy that happens with music. journey, I think we've all experienced that, myself and everyone else on the journey, that whether they understood it or not, music has this amazing energy and vibration that transcends to people and makes you just feel very at peace. artists who have kind of had the opportunity to experience new things and new people and new cultures and new music, that definitely adds another layer to that person in whatever art that they do. And that is from experiences. Without experiences, you can't really offer that in-depth extra layer into your, to, into your art. There's so many different ways that people live, especially in North America. There's a very, it's a very one way of life that most people lead. But then you, you travel to these remote areas and you see that there's so many different ways that one can decide to live. Even when we went to the, the monastery. Witnessing the monks chanting and just without even understanding what they're what they're chanting about, you just feel this this pulse, this energy, this rhythm, which makes everybody around just feel very calm and at ease. I found that just being there in that moment kind of helped me transcend into my happy place and bring me into a different kind of a different world. Oh
wait a minute. Hang on. Hang on. You sang Danny Boy in Miramar at a monastery on a river. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about an experience. That is like so, so tripped out. How did, how did that feel? It was just such a special feeling for me. And for some really strange reason, this was the song that kind of came to me. One thing that's really unique about that is the fact that you can sing in these multiple non-expected languages. But at the same time, you have to be careful that you really take it serious and do it well because yeah. at first it can be this novelty thing, oh, look at this foreigner, this white girl singing in a different language, and that can you know, really boost your career for a moment. But if you don't do the work, you won't be able to, to sustain that. Yeah. You know, and you're, you're crossing borders ling linguistically, culturally, geographically, politically, <laughs> and it's great because we are all one. You know? That's exactly what I want to do. I want to take these pieces and bring that extra dimension, which we're going to do. That's going to be our, you know, our album. Yeah, it's going to be great. And um, the opportunities you had on this road trip are just once in a lifetime. Once in a lifetime. You know, for sure. Yeah. This entire Nexa journey is kind of feels like a dream. Some days I wake up and I think, did this actually really happen? Because it just feels so surreal to me. In the midst of all these incredible experiences, if you don't have people to share them with, they don't mean nearly as much. And I feel very blessed that I've been able to make so many wonderful friends on this trip. And actually share these experiences with them. It's the people, everything's about the people. Music to me is not only a sound, but a feeling. For me, when I sing, there's a feeling that I get in my soul and in my heart. It's a special kind of energy and a connection, which to be honest is really hard for me to explain, but I know it, I, I know it when it's there, and it's kind of a feeling of bliss. I think all artists, in whatever art form that they're very passionate about and that they connect to, they all experience this. I hope that everybody gets to experience that feeling one way and one day, and whatever helps them feel that. But for me, it is through music and, and through singing.